What's up guys and how is everybody doing out there? Hope everybody is doing well. You know what guys, today I'm gonna go over a little bit of uh, reasons why you would not move into Angeles City or even move out of Angeles City. Um, remember, you have to be happy where you're at. If you're moving to the Philippines, you gotta be happy. Not what other people want you to be happy living, it's where you need to be happy. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. Sorry, I don't have no fancy chalkboard, you know, like a kindergarten or kindergarten chalkboard or anything like that to write everything down. It's all written down in a tablet right here, and uh, we're gonna go over these uh, these uh, few items, I guess you could say, real quick. First of all, air pollution. Now some of these some of these are all gonna tie in, but air pollution, guys, it is. I mean. The air quality, what do I mean by that? The pollution, the trikes, the jeepneys, you know, the, the, the motorbikes, you know, the exhausts that are just spewing out of these uh, vehicles are just terrible. Think about it. You hop in a trike, you go down the road and you get caught in traffic. You're sitting there in traffic with, say, a jeepney in front of you, a motorcycle in front of you, another trike in front of you. You're just sucking up exhaust. It's so nasty and disgusting the air quality with you know yes they do have emissions but does everybody get their emissions checked properly but the air quality you get out in the province air quality is a hundred percent better air quality no good in this city now you could say well it's no good in any city you're right but if i don't have to be in this city i'm not going to be in the city guys here's another one and it's just sickening and I sent, spoke to a Filipino gentleman this morning and he said the same thing, the crime. The crime here, I am sorry if you want to argue with me, but I'm going here on eight years and the crime in this city, I just feel is getting worse and worse. I'm hearing more and more stories than I've ever helped, I've heard in the past. And this is Filipino on Filipino crime, it's Filipino crime on foreigner crime, you know, from robbery to stick-ups, uh, it's just, it, it's out of control. Um, and I know that's everywhere in this world. Um, it just seems to be getting worse here. Uh, like I said, I spoke with this Filipino gentleman this morning. He said he, he lived there his whole life and he can't remember it being this bad. The thing is now, these guys are blatantly doing it because they know they can get away with it. But crime... Crime, I, I, come on, I, I retired from the corrections and the prison system and dealt with criminals. You know, I don't need to deal with it constantly here. Uh, get out in the province, it's not happening. If it happens, the people will take care of it. They don't put up with it out in the provinces. But crime is out of control and it's, it's sickening. No one has to live like that. No one. Has, needs to walk down the street where if somebody just randomly is going to come up and stick a knife in you or randomly come up and point a weapon at you or just steal your phone you shouldn't have to deal with that anywhere in this world but crime is getting worse noise <laughs> the noise you know i said it to Keila reef and we sit there every you know not every morning but quite a few times throughout the week and there's multiple times we're sitting outside just talking and we have to stop talking because some guy coming by on a motorbike with a straight pipe because he thinks it's cool to have loud pipes loud pipes don't belong to any other motorcycle except for Harley on a Harley they're acceptable a little 125 or a little 110 CC riding down the road with straight pipes unacceptable but yeah you, you deal with that all the time that loud pipes when you want to just relax i know philly go inside then you don't have to deal with it true but why should i have to why can't i sit outside enjoy the company of my friends enjoy breakfast and talk music another thing that's that's another thing all in itself uh, we don't have that music problem here where we live with people screaming and video till so two or three o'clock in the morning. We don't have that here. Um, but yeah, noise, driving, 
You know, I was just thinking about this the other day. So, and, and I've talked to other people that do drive here. It's like the second you leave your place where you live, whether it's in a house, in a con or whatever, the second you get on the streets here, you gotta constantly, constantly be looking in your mirror, left, right, behind you. You know, you wanna turn right, you're in a far right hand lane, you're getting ready to turn. Some bozo zips up the right side of you. It's like it stretches you out every day, every time you get behind the wheel. It's this, and I've driven other parts of the Philippines. In this city, it's like, what rule book? What rule book is there? I do what I want when I'm driving. I gotta get there before you, and if I gotta go 100 mile an hour to go two feet up the road to get around you, I wanna do it. But why is it the second you jump on the Clark, you know how to drive, but driving is just crazy, crazy in this area. Like I said, I've driven in other parts of the Philippines and people drive properly. They know how to drive. It's just out of control here. And every day you got to stress when you get up and want to drive. No. Electric. Now you might say, well, Philly, electric is great in Angeli City. Angeli City, Angeli City. It's great. Yeah, we have brownouts, but they don't last very long. True. Very true. But you know what? I am tired of overpaying for electric in this city. Overpaying. And it is overpaying. And people complain. And people go down to the electric company. And nothing's done. You don't have a choice here. You got one electric company. One electric company only. And that's it. That's it. I am tired of overpaying for electric. Why is it up in Dao, where a friend of mine lives, nice size house, bigger than the one we're living, runs air conditioning, has a regular, you know, has a nice refrigerator, American style, has a washer, uh, doesn't have a dryer, but he's paying half of what we pay here, sometimes less than half. I'm tired of being gouged for electric. Well, you'll. Be without electric in the province and have brownouts. Yeah, but there's this great thing called, you know what it's called? It's called a generator. Uh, let's see, transportation. Here's a great one too, transportation. You got trikes, you got motorbikes, you got jeepneys, you got blue taxi, you got grab. Yes, they're all great. Once again, you're in a trike, you're sucking up fumes. Transportation. Once again, I am tired of being overcharged by trike drivers here. Overcharged. Why is it I go into province, I go four or five times further than what I'd go here in Angley City, and I'm paying a hell of a lot less. I'm tired of being overcharged for transportation. Now Grab and Blue Taxi, yes, it's a set fee. You're gonna use them, great. Jeepneys are a set fee, but why is it the trike drivers love to overcharge you here. Tired of it. People are tired of it, but they accept it. Food. Yes, there's great food here. And what do I mean by food? You know what? It's like coming from the West. <clears throat> if you have access to easy food, guess what happens? You start blowing up. You start getting heavier. And I know that's a, person, a person's personal habit of what they eat. But when things are easily accept, accessible here in Angeles City, which there is, tend to live a little unhealthy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but food, yes, it's here, but having access, access to so much food can sometimes be bad for your health, right? Skin tax, I am tired of the skin tax in Angeles City. Everywhere you go, unless you go to the mall and it's marked skin tax. Why is it I have to pay 500 pesos for a kilo of something where the Filipino here only has to pay 100 pesos? What is the difference? Skin tax. I've been in the provinces and I've talked to people that live in the province and they say, you know, no, we don't get skin tax. They don't know how to take advantage of a foreigner. They take advantage of foreigners here in Angeles City like you wouldn't believe. Skin tax, tired of it. The smells. <laughs> uh, 
You guys have seen me walk. I'm walking down the street in the tourist area. The area where you draw tourists coming into Angley City for whatever reason. It freaking stinks. It just stinks. Way to promote tourism, right? The beggars. Here's another one. The beggars. Everywhere you turn in this Angley City, at least, now even in Center City, I've been there. There's a beggar in your face all the time, shoving his hand out. Uh, 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 like the one I call the gecko up on Walking Street every day. Uh, 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 uh. She'll sit there and do that noise uh, 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 to the point you get so disgusted with her that you give her money to get away. The beggars everywhere you turn in the city, up around Walking Street area, Fields Avenue, off the side streets, in the parks, they're begging, they're constantly shoving that hand in your face, constantly. I couldn't tell you how many times a day I'm like, no, 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 no. Now there are a few that I will give to, all right? But I'm sitting at Tequila Reef. There they are, they come up. Hand out, hand out, hand out. No, try to sell me something. If you're gonna sell me something, I can respect that more. But the beggars, I am tired of the beggars. And I've traveled other places in the Philippines. Do they have it? Maybe it depends on where you're at, but I've never experienced it in other places more than I experience here in the city. Who wants to be sitting there when, when people shoving stuff in your face? Or every time you walk by somebody, they're, you know, a beggar's trying to, you know, throw their hand out to you to give you something. The beggars. <coughs> I don't know if I said this or not, but the trash. <laughs> the trash. Now, where we live and other places, yes, the people themselves take pride in their neighborhood. Not all neighborhoods, but they'll take pride in their neighborhoods. Like, where we live, people are always out there sweeping every morning, cleaning up whatever garbage is around. Because, you know, you always have the pig that wants to drive by in his trike or on a motorcycle and throw the crap out on the street, you know, because, you know, they were never taught how to keep themselves clean. And I always say, does that same person, you know, throw trash all over their house? No. But once they step out onto the street, the whole entire city becomes a trash dump for them. But the trash is just crazy, out of control. Once again, up around Walking Street, um, I'm noticing more and more, you know, I don't know if it's a switch of hands from the barangay captain, but the garbage is all over the place. You walk down the side streets, off Walking Streets. Now remember, this is your top tourist destination in Angley City. The Walking Street and the Walking Street area and the hotels and the restaurant. I step off Walking Street after they picked up the trash off of Walking Street and it's a garbage can. It's a garbage can. This is what you're presenting tourists in this area. Hey, look at us. We'll take all your money, but you know what? You're gonna have to deal with everything looking like a garbage can. It's disgusting, it's sick. Why is it I go in the provinces and I go to other places and the people take pride in their cities? Yeah, they might not be real big or you know as big as Angola City, but you know what? They take pride in their city. They clean it up. They don't throw garbage. Will you see garbage? Yeah, it, it's, it's normal to see some garbage. But here, it's just crazy. It's nasty. It's gross. It's disgusting. I always say it comes back to the people. I've seen many, as a matter of fact, I've seen a barangay vehicle a couple years ago driving down MacArthur. Barangay guys in it. Barangay workers in it, barangay truck, it says it. Window comes down and out goes a Jolly Bee bag full of garbage. And down the road they keep going. Garbage. Just it It's it's nasty. It's a nasty problem. It can be cleaned up. Once again, I think that goes back to the community. And not only the community, but the person themselves. But if you've been taught that all your life, 
that as soon as you step outside your house, everything else is fair game. It's a garbage can, go for it. But that's just a few of the reasons uh, that you would not want to live in Angley City or why you would want to leave Angley City. With that being said, I got a challenge out there. There's a guy, there might be a few guys out there, that say, old Philly, he's not leaving Angley City. He's just talk. He's using it for clickbaits. He ain't ever moving. To those people that, uh, that say that, the jealous haters, let me say that again, the jealous, jealous haters, I got 50,000 pesos in my pocket right now that I will put up against your 50,000 that says I am. You're saying I'm not, break out that 50. I say I am, I got that 50. Let's put your money where your mouth is and we'll go from there. Anybody. Anybody. 50,000. Think about that. 50,000. I'm not leaving. You're going to get 50,000. And just think, you could be a big baller up on Walking Street for one night. Instead of a bar troll, you could be a big baller. There it is. Anybody out there. 50,000. Put your money where your mouth is. If I stay, I give you 50. If I leave, you give me 50. But then again, if I leave, you won't give me 50. Eh. That just shows the kind of person you would be. Anyways, guys, that's it, and we will talk to you later.